Okay, so in this set of videos, I'm going to walk over uh, some of the steps I take to edit a model uh, in preparation for various things. It could be for a surgical guide, it could be for a wax up, uh, or it could even be for orthodontic models, which is what this is going to be for a clear liner case. So this is a, an optical scan. You can tell one of the reasons you can tell is because it's hollowed out on the inner side. Uh, that's pretty uh, common with optical scans. And this was given to me by someone that used an iTero, an older model. And so we're going to go through some of the steps that I take to clean this up before I start using it for the actual uh, planning. So the first thing is, you can see the little blebs. These, these occur on occasion. Um, they don't, I think some scanners are more prone to it, uh, but uh, I, I've seen in CEREC scans, more often it'll be like more of a, a void in the model, just a hole, not so much a, a positive error like this. But that's okay. They're pretty easy to fix. Uh, there's a few different ways to do that. Now, we have our select tool up here. Um, I, you can also just press the S button. If I press S, uh, it gives me this area. Now this is the highlighted by whole area. I'm selecting, I'm highlighting. Um, so that is one of the ways to uh, find this area. So if I hit escape, hit S again, up here there's a little size slide bar. Or if I use the bracket buttons, I can make it bigger and smaller. So I'm going to make it small. And one of the ways to do this is to simply highlight the whole part that's uh, defective. and um, you know, find these little blebs and highlight them and then make sure you've got it all highlighted and then once you're there you can hit delete so now you get these holes and we can fill these holes in the problem is on a space like this you actually want this cusp to be filled out and the problem the software doesn't really know where so you can sometimes run into errors with that so I don't necessarily recommend that approach at least not the way I just did it so I'm gonna hit control Z to undo that delete, deletion, hit escape, hit S. And now another way to do it is actually to make your selection area much, much smaller and just select right at the base. We don't actually need to select the top area, and I'll show you why in a moment. But if we make it so that if I hit delete, it's no longer connected, that'll work. Delete, that little guy's just floating off in there. And this looks fairly well removed. Yep, it's floating there. This guy right here is a bit bigger and bulkier in its connection. I delete, and I see that it's sort of floating there. I don't really like this little hump right there, or this little triangle. Okay, so now everything's sort of separated away. Let's get this guy over here too. And delete. So now those two little pieces just float in there. OK, so what, what do we want to do now? We can just go ahead and double click on the entire main model. And you see everything's highlighted except these pieces because they're not continuous. If I now press the I button, it inverts the selection. So now only things that aren't continuous are selected. If I hit delete, they disappear, and now I've, all I have is the model that looks pretty clean, just happens to have a few holes in it. There is one other little area that I want to clean up. It's right here in the lingual of this molar. And I'm going to show you another way to do this selection process. Um, as opposed to actually going through here and using my little round tool, I'm going to draw a line. Now, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do this. If I do this, notice the arc path that I'm taking. Now, it didn't know which side to take, okay? So if I hit invert, okay, just this is selected, but also this is, and look what happens out here. It doesn't know where the line ends, and I'm gonna explain a little better what I mean. If I hit escape, hit S to select, and start my line up here, and then bring it right up, hit I to invert. Now the only thing that's selected is that little dot. Now, truthfully, in this situation, it really didn't highlight as much as I would like it to. So this isn't a great example of a place to use that, but it does work on those other blubs. That would have been actually a pretty good option. It would have worked pretty well. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. It's pretty uh, intuitive. Now that's taken out of there. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to fill those holes. To do so, I'm going to come over to the Analysis button. I'm going to hit the Inspector. Now, this is going to show me any errors in the model, any holes. And one thing that's important to realize is that there is, 
um, right? That hole is not should not be there. So that most likely came from one of my other edits. So let's see when. Let's hit escape. To control Z. Control Z. Control Z. Aha. So when I selected it here, and also selected this. So that's something to be cautious of. Um, how it did it is probably just when I was uh, selected here, somehow my dot got elsewhere in the model. But if you do this, what well, do you want to have to go through the trouble? What if this is a really challenging object and you spent a bunch of time selecting it? Well, you don't want to have to redo that. So instead, you can deselect this area. To do that, I'm going to make my, spit, my cursor a little bit bigger. I'm going to hold the Shift button. So actually, let's take a look. If I just click, it's going to continue highlighting. If I hold the Shift button, I can deselect. So now the only thing that has been selected is that little area. And just to confirm, let's look all around. I don't see any other orange. And I should have probably done a little better job of looking. It doesn't happen too often, but that's the, the explanation there. All right, so we've got our hole. Those holes, let's go to the analysis, inspector. Okay, so you can see your little holes that have been selected. And one thing to keep in mind is, let's, there's a little hole in that inside. This little cursor is actually pointing to the entire base of the model because the software doesn't realize you know, that it's okay to have an open model. It wants to close it. I don't really want it to do that for what I'm going to do, and I'll show you in further videos. But if you wanted to close it, you could click on that and, or just hit Repair All, and it would fill that. But I prefer to selectively edit the holes. As I click each one of them, you can see the hole disappear. Occasionally, somewhat rarely, but occasionally the the correction corrects a small error but still leaves a hole. If that happens, just click Inspector again, and then it will re-highlight that hole. So I'm done at this point selecting. Not a big deal, but if you don't like the fact that there are different colors, um, to fix that very quickly, hit Control A or to which will select all, come to modify, clear face group, or control shift G. Now it's all one solid color. Okay, that is how we correct models for holes.